the next speaker is Jeremy Price from Duke University, and he'll be talking about development and implementation of an educational simulation workshop in fiber optic laryngoscopy for radiation oncology residents. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share our work at ROCSIG, the Duke experience in creating this workshop to teach residents fiber optic laryngoscopy. As you all know, fiber optic laryngoscopy is a crucial role in the diagnosis and management of head and neck disease. We use it to assess primary tumor disease extent, response to treatment, toxicity during treatment, and a surveillance after treatment has been completed. However, despite the fact that it has such a central role in head and neck oncology, there's no standardized training protocol, at least in our institution. Potential barriers and potential lack of teaching time or space or infrastructure. And current alternatives that exist may be cadaver-based education, practicing on colleagues or just patients in the clinic, which certainly isn't a low-stress situation. And in the very near future, I think we'll be hearing about alternatives such as uh, 3D printing capability to use mannequins designed that way. Which brings us to the role of simulation-based medical education, SBME. Uh, we've heard already today, and many of the ROCSIG uh, organizers are extensively involved in this, SBME is already employed in many areas in radiation oncology, be it radiation treatment planning, gynecologic or prostate brachytherapy, emergent on-call treatments, and in many ways it's superior to traditional teaching for learning complex medical skills. It allows for a low-stress environment, graduated responsibility accorded to the learners, and a way for them to really be able to consolidate a technically complicated skill. What we therefore hypothesized was that by implementing an SBME in fiber optic laryngoscopy, creating an educational workshop to teach not just uh, how to perform the scope exam, but also head and neck anatomy. We would be able to give radiation oncology resident confidence and skill in this procedure. And we coupled this with a bridge to independence in our clinical practice, whereby at our Durham VA satellite facility, um, we had six supervised exams with immediate debriefing and recording of the video exam for all for the participating PGY2 residents. In terms of the workshop design, it was initially conceived through a series of iterative discussions with our program director, head and neck attendings, to identify the key topics and high yield teaching points. This was supplemented by a literature review. Look for prior related experiences in the otolaryngology, but also in surgical skills teaching, how the overall structure for the workshop was chosen and also what led us to choosing the number six supervised exams because based on the ENT literature that's how long it takes to achieve technical proficiency in fiber optic laryngoscopy for ENT residents. Again collaboratively with our faculty we devised be a 30-minute PowerPoint and then through Duke Department of Surgery there's a surgical education activities lab which is a multidisciplinary simulation lab where you can book appointments for access to education space and the simulation space. And it's relatively affordable, only $125 an hour. So our department was on board with that. To give some more detail about the workshop structure, it started with a 30 minute didactic session. We went through all of the very simple to nuts and bolts to complicated aspects of how to technically set up an exam and document and implement it. So even just like pointing out what the buttons are on the scope, how to use it, how to manipulate the camera, we went over things such as head and neck anatomy, it typical like normal anatomy, like patients might see in long-term survivor clinic or pathologic anatomy, like you see the primary tumor here. Following the didactic component, uh, we went on to the simulation component, and we had two primary simulation setups that we used. We had the Laerdal SimMan, which offers superior haptic feedback. You're able to actually insert the scope and feel resistance and look around the same way you might be in a real patient. You can see what that would look like here. 
Alternatively, we had the Symbionics Virtual Bronchoscopy Trainer. So this offered excellent visual feedback. However, the ergonomics are very different in that this is kind of horizontal and not upright like this patient here. In terms of leadership of the workshop, we had senior residents leading it that were that had completed at least one head and neck rotation, were specifically vetted by the program director, and were chosen to be able to lead it. The workshop was offered in the first one to two weeks of each academic year to have maximal impact on inexperienced trainees. To assess the impact of our workshop, we designed pre and post workshop surveys to give to our participants. We asked for their subjective confidence in fiber optic laryngoscopy ability and head and neck anatomical knowledge, which was rated on a Likert scale. And we wanted to know if this was clinically relevant exercise. And we just wanted feedback and suggestions because this is something that we're implementing and wanted to build and roll out. This, this workshop was offered in the 2017-2019 academic years. We did surveys in the latter two. And you can see the statistics for the latter two years. We had 18 participants, 14 respondents. And of note, we included rotating medical students because they were going to be entering radiation oncology and because they met our target demographic, uh, you know, inexperienced trainee is unfamiliar with how to perform a scope exam. In terms of the results that we found, all of our respondents found the SBME workshop to be clinically informative. All of the PGY2 residents completed their supervised exams and debriefing. Those results were confidential, so I can't share them today, but what I can discuss is that in terms of FOL uh, ability and head and neck anatomical knowledge, there were significant increases in resident confidence. And when we stratified that based on resident uh, experience level, where MS4s and PGY2s were novice, as opposed to PGY3 and above residents, there was a significant improvement just in the novice learners, where we had uh, Mean FOL procedural skill confidence increased from 1.1 to 2.6, and anatomical knowledge from 1.6 to 2.2, respectively, whereas there were no significant increases in the experienced cohort of residents. There are lots of potential avenues to expand this uh, initiative that we have. We can have more objective, knowledge based pre and post testing. We can look for ways to increase senior resident participation because notably they can participate in the surveys to so maybe having a mentorship role or conversely, we have a new resident boot camp for onboarding residents, just incorporating this as part of the onboarding. Potential difficulty with that is just timing of the simulation and scheduling of the simulation lab and head and neck attending availability and making more path pathology reference images available. And in particular, having a representative repository of uh, scope findings from representative primary tumors and on treatment findings that our residents would be able to use and turn to. So in conclusion, our fiber optic laryngoscopy simulation-based medical education workshop was made feasible and its goals were achieved. It improved FOL skill and head and neck anatomical knowledge. Low cost, an exportable concept. We did a review of the top 50 training institutions in radiation oncology. More than 95% had access to simulation labs, so they would be able to do this type of workshop. And by offering the workshop during protected educational time, it allows us for a safe and low-risk training environment. Here at Duke, we incorporated it into our normal morning conference, which happens before clinic every day. And that helped to assure the fact that it was well attended, and we got attending buy-in and participation. I'd like to thank all of our co-authors, Daphne Spiegel, now Fifth Israel Deaconess, helped to start this initiative, Program Director Joe Salama, and everyone else on the Head and Neck Training Faculty. Yesterday, perfect time for Roxig, our article hit pre-press on Red Journal website, so you can find it there. And thank you to Roxig for the opportunity to talk about our work.